rise to support this bill, which will improve the support and futures of our young people in schools in South Australia. The Education and Children's Services Bill 2018 will modernise legislation for education and children's services, providing a contemporary framework for the delivery of high quality children's services and compulsory education within South Australia. This bill incorporates the amendments on a range of matters that the Liberal Party flagged in opposition was necessary for quality education in South Australia. In particular, this bill fulfils the Marshall Government's election commitments to remove the previous government's proposed central controls over school governing councils and entrench a legal fund for governing councils in dispute with the department as proposed by the DeBell recommendations. And it will introduce legislation to increase fines to deter, deter chronic truancy. What we are doing in this bill. The bill will repeal and replace the Education Act 1972 and the Children's Services Act 1985, establishing a contemporary legislative framework for the delivery of high quality education and children's services in our state. Our children deserve access to the best schools, preschools and children's services, and this bill aims to establish the conditions necessary for teachers, parents, families and communities to work together to give our children the best start in life. Key improvements include, in relation to governing councils, and the bill removes the central controls over the school and preschool governing councils proposed in the previous iteration of the bill by the former Labor government. Our government believes that by empowering school, school communities, we will deliver better student outcomes and have happier and more efficient school communities. We have removed provision for the minister to direct, suspend, dissolve and establish a new governing council under disciplinary circumstances. We have also introduced changes to ensure parents, or other persons responsible for children and students at the schools, preschools and children's centres will form the majority of the members of the governing councils of those schools and services. I speak firsthand about the value of our governing councils, having been on the Golden Grove High School Governing Council and now the third year on the Golden Grove Primary School Governing Council and regularly attending the other governing councils in the seat of King. The bill includes provision for governing councils to access funds for independent legal advice when they are in dispute with the department. This was a specific recommendation of the DeBell Royal Commission. At this point, I want to take a moment to acknowledge my friend and a fierce child protection advocate, Dennis Soester, who was, at the, who was the school whistleblower whose efforts helped lead to a Royal Commission into a sexual, sexual abuse and how we handle that in our South Australian school system. Mm -hmm. The Royal Commission found significant failings within the department over the handling of a sexual abuse case at the school in Adelaide, Adelaide's western suburbs, which had grave and long-lasting effects on the community there. The parents and the constituents of this state expect us as a parliament and as a government to do everything in our power to ensure that children are protected. Under this bill, the Crown Solicitor or a nominee of the Crown Solicitor will make a decision as to whether a Governing Council's request meets the necessary requirements to be funded. The relevant funds will be administered by the Attorney General's Department. This bill will impact committee membership. This government believes that the needs of the school, the preschool or children's service are not necessarily served by having staff representation on decision-making groups only available to members of the Australian Education Union. This bill removes the exclusive right of the Australian Education Unit to nominate members of the relevant committees formed under the bill, including a selection including selection committees for promotional level positions in the teaching service, 
reclassifications and review committees considering the amalgamation or closure of a school. The members of selection committees will now be appointed by the department's chief executive and at least one member will be a person elected from the teaching service to represent them on such committees. For the purposes of amalgamations and closures of schools, review committees will include a staff member of each school to be nominated by their respective staff. Religious or cultural activities. The bill retains the opportunity to f for schools and preschools to participate in religious or cultural activities. This could include a pastor coming to the school to conduct a session explaining Easter or an imam explaining Ramadan, or perhaps a group of students attending a community prayer breakfast. These matters are dealt with in existing legislation through section 102 of the Education Act. 102, religious education. Point one, regular provision shall be made for religious education at a government school under such conditions as may be prescribed at times which the school is open for instruction. Two, the regulation shall include provision for permission to be granted for exception from religious education on conscientious grounds. The new bill proposes at section 82 some reforms that provide some greater clarity about how this will work in practice. Importantly, the new bill clarifies that if such a religious or cultural activity is to take place, parents should be notified. It retains arrangements under which a parent can seek to have their child exempted from participation in such activities on conscientious grounds. A child who is exempted from such activities would be provided with an alternative activity related to the curriculum during the period in which the activities are conducted. This bill proposes retaining the opt-out principle for families seeking that their child should be exempted. Importantly, the Act will make it clear that Christmas carols may be sung in South Australian government schools and preschools. Mm -hmm. I believe this will be very well received by many King constituents, and this was certainly an issue raised to me by uh, many members numerous times in my 10 months of door knocking. Attendance. Education is key to providing opportunities for children to prosper and to contribute to their communities. The Nyland Royal Commission found truancy to be a significant risk factor in child protection concerns. In addition, research consistently alerts us to chronic non-attendance as a risk factor to the ongoing social and economic disadvantage across a child's lifetime. The bill has multiple measures that support a student's attendance and reduce chronic truancy. The bill includes increased penalties for, ch for parents of children who are chronically absent from school and provides a broader range of measures to deal with non-attendance, including the provision for family conferencing. The purpose of family conferencing is to enable school staff to work in partnership with families to improve the attendance of their child at school. The bill does not include provision for the issuing of expiation notices for non-attendance as proposed by the previous Labor government. Issuing of expiation notices for these types of offences would undermine the benefits of early intervention through family conferences and support work. In addition to these strengthened provisions, the government will be auditing the attendance policies at all government schools, taking steps to ensure that children in out-of-home care are engaged in education. The government will also be increasing the number of truancy officers employed in the department by 50%. Safe learning and working environments. The government is supportive of strong measures to pr protect students, teachers and other staff acting in the course of their duties from offensive behaviour or the use of abusive, threatening or insulting language. Included in the bill is the provision to suspend, exclude or expel a student from a school if a student has perpetrated violence acted illegally or persistently interfered with the ability of a teacher to conduct their lessons. 
Other measures aimed at promoting safe learning and working environments include providing power for the Chief Executive to terminate employment of an officer of the teaching service if the officer is not a registered teacher within the meaning of the Teachers' Registration and Standards Act, or if an officer is a prohibited person with the meaning of the Child Safety Prohibited Persons Act 2016. The provision for a person to be barred from a school preschool or children's service if that person has behaved in an offensive manner while on the premises or threatened or insulted staff or committed or threatened to commit any other offences in relation to the premises. Dealing with trespass on all schools, preschools and children's services sites. Strengthen provisions for authorised persons to deal with people behaving in an unacceptable manner on the premises mandating working with children checks for adults returning to study at schools, prohibiting the use of corporal punishment in all preschools and schools, and providing a power for the chief executive to, to direct a child who may pose a risk to the health, safety or welfare of other students or staff. Employment provisions for staff. Staff employed within our schools, preschools and children's services are integral in providing high quality education services to South Australian children. Staff work tirelessly to understand and respond to learning, wellbeing and safety needs of all children in order to provide them with the best opportunity to succeed. This bill brings together and strengthens the employment provisions for teachers and support workers in the government schools, preschools and children's services under a single act. This bill enables the attraction and retention of high quality teachers to public schools experiencing challenging challenges to recruiting the high quality staff they require to achieve outcomes. This bill supports schools and preschools to retain quality leaders and teachers, including enabling the extensions of teachers in promotional appointments initially made through a formal merit selection process without having to undergo a further merit selection process when the staff member is performing well. This provides the opportunity also for the Chief Executive to employ a broader range of staff in schools and preschools, including nurses, social workers, youth workers and allied health professionals to provide support services to students. This will provide flexibility to schools to respond to the needs of their local community. It also continues to provide access for teachers to the South Australian tribunal to, for a review of a decision or determination of the CE made in relation to their employment. This ensures that teachers are not subject to any unreasonable or arbitrary decisions by their employer. Another great thing about this bill is the improved information sharing. It will ensure that, a stu that student experiences continuity with their learning, safety and wellbeing which is vitally important in providing high quality educational service. This bill includes a number of provisions to improve information sharing between government and non-government schools, preschools, children's service centres and the department where necessary to support the education, health, safety, welfare or wellbeing of a child. This is another area that I've had direct feedback from principals when they have concerns over the safety of a child and other children that might be impacted by that child moving between schools. The bill also includes important safeguards to protect personal information from an un unauthorised disclosure or misuse. This bill resolves a number of operational and legal issues associated with the current legislation. Significant public consultations on the reform of the Education and Children's Services Acts have occurred to get the bill to this point. Successive attempts to modernise the Education Bill have suffered in the past from half-hearted interest by former governments. Mr Speaker, I thank you for the opportunity to speak on this bill today 
to improve the learning outcomes of South Australian children. And I thank the Minister for Education for fulfilling the Marshall Government's election commitments to the people of South Australia. Again, we are delivering. Teachers play such an important role in the development of a child, and I'm so blessed to have been able to have such a fantastic network of schools across the electorate of King. I recommend this bill. Here, here. Here, here. Member for Hurtlevale. Thank you, Mr.